Hi guys, uh, this video we are going to see about adjustment of capital method case 2. Last video I explained about adjustment of cap uh, capital method case 1 in partnership admission. So we are going to see case 2. Let me first tell you how to identify which case is that. Okay, Because you are going to definitely come across either case 1 or case 2. So how to identify a problem. Like I told you there is a small hint for it. If the incoming partner's capital is given then it is case 1. If the incoming partner's capital is missing, you need to find out the incoming partner's capital based on the existing partners, then that is case 2. So I have taken reference of illustration 65, page number 4.74 of T.S. Grewal book. Okay? Now let's see what's given in this problem. Sahaj and Nimish are partners. Uh, Gauri is getting admitted. They are sharing profits losses ratio of 2 is to 1. Okay? The balance sheet is given. So and we have the adjustment. As I've already told you, analyze the balance sheet, see what are the reserves. Here I have general reserve, employee provident fund. Okay, I forgot to tell you about this. This is very, very important. We have never seen videos where we have divided employees provident fund. Reason being, they are liabilities of the firm, not the partners. So you don't need to divide employee provident fund to the partners. So it is never divided in partnership or retirement or death. In any case, you don't divide the employee provident fund. It is just shown in the liability side. Okay. Coming to the assets, we have all the assets. So there is no other capital losses here. You don't have PNL, you don't have the other funds. Let's go to the adjustment. Reduce the value of stock by 5000. It's reduced in the value of an asset. So to stock 5000, it's very clear. The next one, depreciate furniture by 10% and appreciate machinery by 5%. So depreciation is decrease in the value. So it's two furniture, 10% of 80,000 is 8000. Appreciate machinery by 5%. Appreciate is increase in the value. So it's buy machinery. 5% of machinery 1,20,000 gives me 6,000. So I filled all that. Okay. The next thing, very, very important. 3,000 of the debtors proved bad. So what are they called? What, what do you mean? Debt has become bad. How much? 3,000. So if it's bad debts, it's reduced in the value of an asset. So two bad debts, 3,000. But it doesn't stop with that. There is also a provision for bad and doubtful debts. A provision of 5% was to be created on sundry debtors for doubtful debts. So whenever you come across both bad debts and bad and doubtful debts, how do you solve this? I think you guys know the hierarchy order. It's always the bad debts first because they are irrecoverable. So my debtors are 30,000. So out of the 30,000, take off 3,000. So you are left out only with 27,000 as your debtors. Out of the 25, out of the 27,000, you have to calculate 5% bad and doubtful debts. If you do so, you will get 1,350. So I'm repeating, this is 5% of 27,000 and not 30,000. That's because I already have a bad debt of 3,000. Okay. So in sundry debtors, I'll reduce the bad debts of 3,000. Okay. The balance is 27,000. In that, I calculate 5%. That's 1,350. Okay. So with this, we're done with the revaluation adjustments, I believe. The next thing is goodwill of the firm. Uh, goodwill of the firm was valued at 45,000. So as you guys know, um, firm's goodwill is given. We have to calculate the incoming partner's goodwill. Incoming partner share is nothing but let's look out for incoming partner share in this problem. He is admitted for one third share. So out of the 45,000, I calculate one third. That will give me 15,000. So that 15,000 goodwill, I have to divide it among the old partners in the old sacrificing ratio. So that is done. The old ratio is 2 is to 1. So that's divided. Premium for goodwill is over. Please keep in mind, do not divide the firm's goodwill. Most of the sum in the problem, firm's goodwill will be given. You need, to be, you need to calculate the share of the incoming partner. So the incoming partner share of goodwill alone should be divided. So many times you become hasty in dividing this amount which is given in the problem. So please be very careful in that. So the last adjustment which is very important. Prepare revaluation account, partner's capital account, balance sheet. So this is what is given in the problem. So how did I identify it is the case 2? 
because I told you incoming partners share of capital is not given in the problem okay so that is something we're going to learn new in this problem the rest all the adjustment I've done as usual see we have general reserve in the problem I've divided that premium for goodwill is done so buy bank which is the new partners uh, capital which is missing so I'm going to tell you how we're going to calculate the new partners capital now just recollect what we discussed in the previous video in case one it is based on the incoming partner you found on the total capital of the new firm so the total capital of the new firm was incoming partners capital divided by his share here it is based on the existing partners you're going to find out the incoming partner share so it is existing partners capital divided by existing partner shares so existing partners are can be two or three so that's why I use the word combined so it's adjusted combined capital of existing partners divided by combined share of the existing partners so how do I get adjusted capital of the combined partners that's nothing but the balancing figure that I get in the capital account so I get a balancing figure I add both so I, that leaves me with 2 lakh 33 650 so this is nothing but the adjusted combined capital of existing partners divided by their combined share how do you think I can calculate the combined share because you will have the shares separately but how do I get the combined share you can take the total share to be 1 okay minus the incoming partner share so that leaves me with 2 by 3 this is nothing but remaining share so take the total share to be 1 subtract the incoming partner share that will give you the remaining share this remaining share when it goes to the numerator it becomes reciprocal so that became 3 by 2 so adjusted combined capital of the existing partners into reciprocal of their combined share so that will give me the total capital of the new firm so i'm getting the total capital of the new firm to be 1,16,825 which is nothing but no no i'm sorry i'm getting 3,50,475 as the total capital of the new firm out of which i have to take the incoming partner share 3,54,75 again I'll repeat all we are trying to find out is we are trying to find out the total capital of the new firm so I've got the combined capital of the existing partners into reciprocal of their share so that gives me 3,54,75 which is nothing but the total capital of the new firm but what do I need? I don't need the total capital of the new firm. I need the incoming partner share of capital. So what's the incoming partner share? One third. So 3,54,75 into 1 by 3. That will give you 1,16,325. So I will go and fill that amount here. So I'm getting 1,16,325 for one third share in the total capital. So after filling that, you do a balance. You get the balancing figure for all the three this will be taken to the balance sheet the rest all the adjust i mean all the items are filled because there are no adjustment if you look at the asset side i have debtors 30000 you have to show to the inner column due to lack of space i have not shown it here i have directly shown it to the outer column but then it's mandatory you show the adjustments in the inner column for example debtors 30000 less bad debts 27,000 less provision for bad debts 1,350 that will give you 25,650 in the outer column next cash 20,000 I'm not making any change to cash furniture you have depreciation less that and then put it here machinery 1,26,000 I've, I've got appreciation and machinery I've added that I've got this stock I've got depreciation so I've subtracted and I've got this bank how did I get that bank amount nothing but what I found out here uh, bank account uh, in my balance sheet I don't have a bank account in my balance sheet but the balancing figure what I've got here is 1 lakh 16 825 that's what I've shown it in my bank account in the asset side okay so after I fill that employee provident fund I've already told you we don't divide that so show it in the balance sheet so I'm getting my total my balance sheet tallies I think everything is taken care in this problem so the difference between the previous case and this case is case one incoming partner capital will be given you adjust the 
uh, existing partner's capital based on them. Case 2, incoming partner capital will be missing. Based on the existing partner capital, you calculate the incoming partner. This is the only difference between case 1 and case 2, adjustment of capital method. So go through this problem. I think you'll be able to understand this. You have any doubts, get back to me. Thank you so much.